What's up guys? Taylor Chamberlain, AKA the Urban Bowman back here. I could not be more excited than to be sitting here right now to talk to you guys about this Garmin Zero crossbow scope. This is the coolest piece of tech that I've gotten to play with in my entire life. And I know that in our industry, a lot of people talk about revolutionary or game changer and all this stuff, but, but this crossbow scope is hands down the coolest piece of gear that I've ever used with that makes me a better hunter, a more efficient hunter. And there are so many features and things in this scope that, that make me a better hunter. And I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about kind of what those features are, how I go about setting the crossbow scope up, because I've gotten to play with it for a long time now. I've been able to take it on a lot of hunts and I've been able to put a lot of deer down with it. And I wanted to talk to you about uh, some features that I find very useful, how I set my scope up, and just all together, the things I like about this that really make it awesome. So a lot of you guys know that I hunt in the suburbs of Washington, DC. I hunt anywhere uh, of 175 to 225 plus days a year. We have a major, major deer problem here in the suburbs of DC. Some of the properties that I'm hunting on in order to control those deer are as small as a quarter acre. And so a crossbow for me is a tool that's in my toolkit that allows me to shoot a giant expandable head and put deer down as quickly as possible. And for me, the difference between a deer running 20 yards, 40 yards and expiring or 150 yards and expiring is night and day because that's the difference in a deer staying on property or maybe a deer crossing two, three, four properties that now I have to go knock on the door of, get permission to go access on, etc. So uh, having a tool that allows me to, without question, hit the 12 ring and put a deer down as quickly as possible is invaluable to me. And this crossbow scope on top of my crossbow makes it that much easier for me to do my job and accomplish my mission and put those deer down as fast as possible. It is loaded with the easiest features I've ever used and just really is an all around super cool piece of gear. So let's talk about some of the features that I truly love within this scope, how I set them up and give you guys some tips and pointers as to what I've found to be really helpful for me. A crossbow scope is really only as good as how accurate it can be. And so that's where this scope comes in really handy. And not only is this scope deadly accurate with the range finding element built into it, but also it is incredibly easy and intuitive to set up. I just love the way that this scope walks you through the process step by step by step. You're never questioning what do I do or what's the next step because the scope is literally telling you what to do, do this, do that. Um, and, and that for me was really, really helpful. It was amazing to me how fast I was able to get set up, sighted in and ready to hunt with a crossbow with this scope. So the first thing you wanna do is set where you want your 20 yard pin to be in your aim point stack. So within this scope, you're able to set your 20 yard pin either higher or lower in, in the scope and that will determine how far you're able to shoot. The higher up in the scope that the 20 yard aim point is, obviously the more range you'll have to go down into the longer yardages, but you know, obviously the higher up in the scope it is. So uh, if you're hunting only at 20, 30, 40 yards, then maybe you want to lower that aim point stack down so that you won't have a majorly long effective range but you will have a much clearer field of view when you go hunting. Um, so that like when you are shooting that deer at 20 yards, uh, the, the aim point is right in the middle. Or uh, if you're like me, you like to shoot longer yardages in practice, I I'm not shooting deer uh, past 20 yards with my crossbow, but uh, I really like to practice out at those longer yardages. So I like to have my aim point stack as high as it can be, but it's important to set that aim point stack where you want it in the scope. So it's important to consider how long you're gonna be shooting during a hunting situation, as well as when you practice, how far do you wanna shoot and when you set that aim point stack. And again, 
the scope will tell you everything you need to know while you're doing it and all the steps. So it'll tell you uh, while you're setting that aim point stack what the maximum effective range most likely will be if you put the stack in that location. So I think that's really a helpful and, and pretty cool feature. Once you determine where your 20 yard aim point stack is gonna be, all of your elevation and windage adjustments are made off the base that is integrated into the scope. So I love the fact that the base is integrated into the scope because that's one less point of failure. That's one less thing that could come loose or go wrong. I also love the fact that in true Garmin fashion, they've thought through everything and they have a finger tightening wheel here that breaks over at the perfect tightness. So basically all you do is you loosen up this little thumb wheel, you make your elevation and windage adjustments, then you tighten it back down until it clicks once, stop. It's at the perfect pounds per square inch tightness. You don't wanna mess with it. So before you make any elevation or windage adjustments, make sure you loosen this knob, make your changes, then tighten it back down, make sure it clicks just one time. Don't over tighten it, that's the perfect perfect pounds per square inch then tighten it down you're good to hunt if you need to make an elevation or a windage change loosen it up make your couple clicks then tighten it back down in the event that you put your 20 yard aim point too high in the stack it's possible that you might run out of elevation adjustments so you literally won't be able to make your aim point line up with where the bolt is actually hitting because you have it too high in the scope um, I doubt that will be a problem for a lot of people out there because this site has so much elevation and windage adjustment capability. But just remember, if you run into that, you might have to lower your aim point stack down until it intersects with where that bolt is actually hitting uh, with your maxed out elevation adjustment. So if you run into the rare issue that you're unable to sight that 20 yard spot in, um, you're gonna have to lower your aim point stack down until it intersects. But again, I don't think that'll be an issue out there. Just keep that in the back of your mind while you're shooting. So once you've selected where you want your 20 yard aim point and the rest of your aim point stack to be within the scope, you've now sighted it in by loosening the knob, making your elevation and windage adjustments. One of the coolest features with this scope is the fact that you are now able to either manually or automatically set the rest of your bow up. The auto calibrate function is so cool. You literally just set your 20 yard aim point, you shoot it in, and then you tell the scope how fast your bow is shooting and it will manually just go and tell you all the pins that you need to shoot all the way out to 80 yards. So for me, I found the auto calibrate function to just be so cool. I could just quickly shoot in at 20 and then bam, I'm auto calibrated all the way out to 80 yards. I'm hitting within a couple, uh, like quarter inch, half inch of, of everywhere and I'm good to go. Um, now, if you don't wanna auto calibrate, obviously you can manually calibrate. The scope will walk you through either option, whether it's an auto or manual calibration, um, but really, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't auto calibrate and then go shoot at those yardages and make minor adjustments if you need to. But I found that the, the scope was absolutely spot on. And that was just one easier step to quickly get me from a setup into the woods hunting. So obviously shoot all the yardages, make sure that they're on, uh, make sure that the auto calibrate is correct for your yardages. But I, I was just blown away at how quickly and correct the auto calibrate was for me uh, once I dialed it in. Now it's important to note that once you do your auto calibrate setting and you start shooting at 40, 50, 60, 70 yards, just to verify that those yardages are correct, if you start seeing the arrows walking out in a certain direction, you're going to want to make adjustments to your windage knob. So even though you think that you might be spot on at 20 yards, in reality, you might actually be hitting just slightly left or slightly right of the bullseye. And so when you see those arrows or bolts start to work out at longer yardages, one click, two clicks will make all the difference in the world. Verify that the bow is level when you're shooting it at those yardages. You're not canting it one way or another. You don't have like a weird issue with your bolt. Uh, but assuming that you have proper bolt flight, you have a level bow, put a couple clicks in that windage knob, you'll quickly see that it won't change your impact point at 20, but it'll really help at those longer distances. 
Now, if you're a hardcore shooter and you want to calibrate your own aim points, that's fine. You can have the scope walk you through all of that without any issue. You can shoot at 20, 25, 30, 35, whatever yardages you want, all the way out to as far as you're comfortable shooting, and you can be walked through the process by the scope and tell it exactly what yardages you're shooting at, where it's hitting, and then even more so tell it what pins you want to implement into the site. So whether you want to go down the auto calibrate function or the manual, it really doesn't matter. But if you do want to do that manual uh, input, you're one of those guys that just wants to do it yourself and know that it's spot on, that's fine. You're able to walk through and do that manual process yourself. The bolt profile menu will allow you to go in and see all of the data associated with every single yardage that you've set up. And this will also allow you to go in and change a yardage Maybe you sighted in at 30 yards one day and you were totally off. You can go in and change that yardage, change that pin, uh, whatever you want to do. You're able to go into that bolt profile, see all the data that's associated with it, and make any adjustments that you might want to make. Under that bolt profile menu, it'll also allow you to set up your fixed pins, which is really cool because when you're looking through the scope, you can toggle between the range setting where you're able to just range your target and have one pin show up, and you can switch over to fixed pins. And the fixed pins for me is something that I really like to use in a hunting application. When I'm first getting set up in a tree, I'm looking around, I'm looking through my shooting windows and I'm trying to figure out, okay, if a deer is standing there, that's 40 yards. And if I take a shot at that 40 yard animal, I can switch over to my fixed pins and see, okay, that tree branch that's at 18 yards, I'm clear of. Uh, because if I'm aiming at 40, my 20 yard trajectory is fine. I don't have to worry about shooting through that window. I'm good to go. Or maybe I might see that that tree branch is a problem and I'll know that I can't take a shot at 40 yards because I'm going to hit a branch. So being able to toggle between the fixed pins and the ranging is really, really helpful. And also if you have an animal come in quick and you, you just don't want to mess with ranging it, um, you're able to just switch over to the fixed pins, put the 20 yard pin on the on the critter and let it eat. You know, you don't have to take the time to range or, or whatever. Uh, if you want to switch to those fixed pins and just take the shot, you're able to. So it's really nice to be able to set those fixed pins up ahead of time, know that you can see what the yardages are and be ready to take a shot right away if you have to. And that bolt profile page will allow you to set up 10 different bolt profiles with 30 different aim points on every single profile, which is really pretty cool. So if you're gonna be heading out west, hunting critters that are fast moving at long distances and you want a really light bolt for uh, long shooting, you can set that up. If you're gonna be hunting in the hardwood hills of Ohio and you have brush, um, you know, you wanna be shooting a heavy bolt, you can set that up. You don't have to worry about taking the time to toggle between all these. You can just keep the profiles stored in here, know you're shooting bolt number one or bolt number two or whatever, switch between them when you're hunting the different spots and you're good to go. Overall, this scope is unbelievable. I could not believe how easy it was to get sighted in, set up and running. To me, I thought the auto calibrate feature was just beyond cool. It was spot on out of the gate. I was able to sight in at 20, make a couple of changes on elevation, windage, just finger tighten this knob back down, have it click over, know that it was perfect, and then be spot on all the way out to 80 yards. Uh, it literally took me maybe five minutes to be sighted in all the way out to 80. I couldn't believe how fast it was and I was ready to go hunting. Hopefully you find this information, tips and tricks helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and otherwise check out all the other videos in the series to talk about the features, the benefits, the cool stuff that's going on in this site and just learn more about it.